Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over the June 2024 Algebra 1 Readings Exam. In our last video, we looked at part 1, which is the first 24 multiple choice questions. Today we're going to be going over part 2, which is just 6 short answer questions, or 6 short response questions, right? They're each worth 2 points only. So the first one in this uh, first question in this section asks us to solve 5 times x minus 2 is less than or equal to less than or equal to 3x plus 20 algebraically, okay? So all we have to do here is just solve for x given this uh, inequality that they gave us, right? And you may be asking, well, how do I solve this? Well, you solve it as any, as you would any other equation, right? You'd solve it as if this was an equal sign. You want to combine like terms. You want to get x on one side and you want to get your numbers on the other side. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to follow that strategy, okay? So the first thing I need to do is I need to get x on, x on one side. Right now, my x is kind of locked in by these parentheses, right? So in order for me to get this these parentheses and this x out of these parentheses, I need to distribute the 5, okay? So in order to distribute the 5, I take the number that's outside of the parentheses, and I multiply it by everything that's inside of them. So 5 times x is going to be 5x, and then 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So 5x minus 10 is less than or equal to 3x plus 20. Now I'm going to continue like, uh, combining like terms, so I'm going to add 10 on both sides. Now I'm left with 5x is, is less than or equal to 3x plus 30, and now I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. And I'm left with 2x is less than or equal to 30. Now, I want to solve for x, right? I want to solve the inequality fully. So I can't leave 2x there. I just need x on its own. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. And I get x is less than or equal to 15. And that's going to be my correct answer. I'm going to box that in. So I solved it for it. I solved for it algebraically, right? I didn't guess and check. I combined like terms. I distributed the, um, the 5. And then I just, just solved all the way down. Okay, so moving on to number 26, it says that given x cubed plus 2x squared minus 10, evaluate g of 3, okay? So we know that g of x uh, is going to equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus x, okay? This is this equation. Now they want you to tell, they want you to solve for g of negative 3, right? All this means is this function or the value, so the value when x is equal to negative 3, that's all. So set x equal to negative 3 and solve, right? So what's negative 3 cubed plus 2 times negative 3 squared minus uh, negative 3, okay? And let's just quickly solve that. So g of negative 3 has to equal to negative 3 squared, which is negative, sorry, negative 3 cubed, which is negative 27, plus 2 times negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is going to be 9, and 9 times 2 is 18. And minus negative 3 is just the same thing as saying plus 3. So g of negative 3 is actually going to equal to negative 27 plus 21. And g of negative 3 has to equal to, um, what is that, negative 6, I believe. Okay, so that's going to be the uh, correct answer for number 26. All you had to do here was, again, figure out that when they ask you g of a value, that means plug this value in for x. If you have g of x and they're asking you for g of negative 3, all this means, the difference between this and this, is this one is going to give you a value. Specifically, it's going to give you a value when x is equal to negative 3, right? So think about it this way. This number is in the place where the x is, so it means you replace the x with negative 3. That's what you get when you, when you replace x uh, with negative 3, okay? I'm going to move on to number 27. It says, given the relation negative 1 comma 1, 0 comma 3, negative 2 comma negative 4, and x comma 5, state a value x that will make this relation a function, okay? And then explain why this answer makes you a function, makes it a function. So here's the thing. Here's the deal with functions, right? In order for something to be a function, each x input has to have one y output. An x input cannot have more than one y output, okay? So one input, one output. For example, the the point 1 comma 1 and 1 comma 2, this would not be a function. Why? Because the x input 1 is equal to both 1 and 2, right? That means it's not a function. This would not be a function. Every x point needs to have only one y point that is associated alongside it, right? Why? Because imagine... You have this graph, right? You have the point 1, 1, which is up here, and 1, 2. You have a vertical line, right? This looks janky, okay? So in order to make this an actual function, all you have to do is just plug in an x value that's not negative 1, that's not 0, that's not negative 2, 
Okay, so let's just choose a random number that's not negative one, zero, or negative two. Let's say one. X equals one works. Why? Because every single X input has one individual Y output, okay? Negative one corresponds to one. Zero corresponds to three. You put negative two in, you get negative four out. So as long as X is not equal to negative one, zero, or negative two, this will be a function, okay? Again, it's very important for us to remember that for a function, for something to be a function, each X input has to have one Y output. And explain why this answer makes it uh, a function. This makes it a function because each input has exactly, or each X input has exactly one Y output, okay? Um, and then you can say that negative one has an output of one, zero has an output of three, negative two has an output of negative four, and one has an output of five, okay? So that's all you need to do here. You just need to state an X value that doesn't match with any of the ones that were already there. Number 28 says a survey of 150 students was taken. It was determined that two thirds of the students play video games. Of the students that play video games, 85 use social media. Of the students who do not play video games, 20% do not use social media, okay? So a survey of 150 students, right? That means that our total or our total number of students is equal to 150, there's 150 of them. It was determined that two thirds of the students play video games, okay? So that means that two thirds of this or two over three times 150 are gonna play video games. Whenever you see two thirds, one half, 50% followed by of, 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 guess what? That of means multiply. You need to multiply to get that value, to translate that English into that math, right? So if two thirds of those students or two thirds of 150 play video games, that means that you need to multiply those two values to figure out how many play video games, okay? And you're gonna find out that a hundred play video games, okay, right? So we know that a hundred students play video games and that 50 students do not play video games and that a there are 150 students in total, okay? That's all, That's we solved the entire bottom row just by reading the problem. Then it says of the students that play video games. So of the students that play video games means that we're going to be looking at the students that play video games. Okay, so we're gonna be looking here when we answer that. 85 also use social media. So boom, of the students that do video games, 85 have social media. So if there's 100 in total, and you know that 85 uh, use social media, how many are left? Well, you have to do 80 minus, 100 minus 85, and you get 15, right? So there's actually 15 teens uh, or, or students, right, that do, not part that do not use social media, okay? You just have to take that out. Then it says, of the students that do not play video games, 20% do not use social media right? So of the students that do not play video games, so instead of looking at this black box, we're now going to be looking at uh, this black box. So of the students that do not play video games, we know that 20% of them do not use it. So we have a percent and we have of next to it, that means we multiply. So 20% of 50 is just 50 times 0 0.20, which is equal to 20%, <clears throat> and that's going to equal to 10. So 10 of these kids do not use social media, which means that the rest of them, there has to be 40 Right? So now you just add up the totals, right? The total amount of students that play social media is going to be 125. The total that do not use social media is just going to be 25, right? That's how we solve this problem. 29 says, use the method of completing the square to determine the exact values of X for the equation. X squared plus 10 minus 30 is equal to zero, right? So what is completing the square? Completing a square is a way that we can factor out uh, a number or factor out one of these. Uh, when we can't like foil it, we can't we can't find numbers that it can break into. Okay, so let's figure out how to do it. Well, there's a very specific format for how you can complete the square. The way that you can complete the square uh, is going to be by doing b over two squared, and you're going to add that on both sides. So because this is equal to zero, we're going to go from here. So you know that the number in front of the thing that's being squared is your a. This is your b, and this is your c. So to complete the square here, okay, all you have to do really is just take the middle term, which is 10, which is your B, divided by two, and then square it. 
10 divided by 2 is 5, and 5 squared is equal to 25. So in order to complete the square, what you need to do is you need to add 25 on both sides, right? And now you have x squared plus 10x plus 25 is equal to 55, okay? And now you can factor out this x squared plus 10x plus 25 into x plus 5 squared is equal to 55. Now you may be asking me, whoa, where do we get the 55 from? Well, when we're completing the square, we're adding a random number. Right? We're adding a random number to our equation. Okay, the whole point that we add the we, we complete the square, right, is because if you divide ten by two and square it, you get a term that allows you to break this into something that can be squared and be put in parentheses. Right? Here's the issue: if I add twenty five to both sides without getting rid of this thirty, I'm left with x squared plus ten x plus five, and this is not a perfect square. I can't convert this into x plus something squared. Right? Only if I have x plus twenty five here. Can I convert this into x plus 5 squared? So I now need to get rid of that obstacle 30. The way that I get rid of that obstacle 30 is by adding it on both sides. Okay. Now, I've if I add 30 on both sides, I've now rewritten it as 10x is equal to 30. And now I can just add 25 to both sides and I get my completed square. Okay. 10x x squared plus 10x plus 25. That simplifies into x plus 5 squared, okay, if you just factor it out. So now I can just continue solving for the exact value of x, okay? Since this x plus 5 is being squared, in order to get x on its own, the only thing I can do to it is take the square root or take its square root. So I'm going to square root both sides, uh, x plus 5 squared, and I'm going to square root 55. This leaves me with x plus 5 is equal to uh, radical... 55 or plus minus radical 55, right? Because negative radical 55 uh, squared is equal to 55 and radical 55, you know, positive or negative doesn't matter. This squared is also equal to 55. So now I know that X has to equal to plus minus radical 55 minus five. All I have to do here is is just subtract the five from both sides, right? In order, in order to get full credit, you all you have to do is say X is equal to radical 55 minus 5, or x is equal to negative radical 55 minus 5, okay? Just for safe measure, don't put plus minus, actually write out the plus and the minus. That's how we solve this problem. Number 30 says factor 20x cubed minus 45 completely, okay? So in this case, we're going to have to divide both sides by a specific number or find what number these sides have in common, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to factor out x, okay? Why do I factor out x? I factor out x because I notice that both of these terms have an x in them. x cubed and x. I can take out an x. So I'm going to take out an x. I'm left with 20x squared minus 45. Okay? Now, I simply have numbers left. And now, notice what I also can take out. Well, 20 and 45 have what number in common? Well, they're both divisible by 5, right? They're both divisible by 5. You divide 20 by 5, you get 4. 45 by 5, you get 9. So if I take out a 5 from here, or if I just divide everything by 5x, I'm actually left with 4x squared minus 9, okay? Now, here is where you have to remember a very important thing about math, right? A very important identity. If you have the difference, it's called the difference of two perfect squares, okay? If you have a squared minus b squared, that's equal to a plus b times a minus b. And that is only true when a squared and b squared are perfect squares. Notice how 4 is equal to 2 squared and 9 is equal to 3 squared. 4 and 9 are perfect squares, which means that I can rewrite this parentheses, right, this 4x squared minus 9, into this expanded form. And I'm going to do that right here. 4x is going to be my a. Okay, so 4x is actually equal to 2x squared, right? And my 9 is just equal to 3 squared. So I'm going to write it as 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 3. And that's going to be my correct answer, okay? So we did, we took a little bit of steps here. Number one, we saw what variable I could take out for both sides. I noticed that I can take out x. Once I took out x, I noticed that I can take out 5 from both of these. I took out 5. Then I noticed that I had the difference of perfect squares. Always remember this. Whenever you see two perfect squares that are being subtracted from one another in the parentheses, okay, guess what? You can rewrite it as the first number plus the second number or the square root of the first number, right? The square root of the first number uh, plus the second number. 
and followed by the square root of the first number minus the square root of the second number. The square root of 4x, right? 4x squared is equal to my a squared, so my a has to be radical 4x squared, which is 2x. That's how I got to that point, okay? Same thing with 9. All right, and that was the end of this section. Oh, it's only six questions. They're both worth two points each. I